Welcome to Electron Line, and in this video we're going to show you how the electrons stack up around the orbits and in the orbitals of the nuclei of the first 10 atoms on the periodic table. So, we know that in the first energy level we have one single s orbital, and that is uh, illustrated right here, the one s orbital is illustrated right here, it is one orbital with room for two electrons. Now for two electrons to exist in a single orbital, one has to be spin up and one has to spin down, and we're going to illustrate that with little arrows. So in the hydrogen atom, there's one proton in the nucleus, one electron in the orbit. So we have one electron in the s orbital, so we'll just illustrate that with one arrow pointing up, assuming that it's going to be spin up. For the hydrogen, it doesn't really matter. It can be spin up or spin down. Either way, it really makes no difference. On the helium, you're going to fill up the first orbital with the two electrons, but since you have two in the same orbital, one will have to be spin up and the other one will have to spin, be spin down. So now we go to the next energy level for lithium, and now lithium has three electrons, and so the first two electrons are going to be filling up the first orbital on the first energy level, and then the next electron has to be in the second energy level. So which of these orbitals will it go into? Will it go into an s orbital, or will it go into a p orbital? Well, it turns out the s orbitals are at a slightly lower energy level than the three p orbitals, so the s orbital gets filled first in the second energy level, so the electron will end up over here. Now for beryllium with the fourth energy, uh, with the uh, fourth electron, the question is, will the fourth electron go into the s orbital over here, the second energy level, or will it go into one of the p orbitals because it wants to be all by itself? Electrons rather not be associated with another electron in the same orbital, but since the s orbital in the second level is so much lower energy than the p orbitals, that fourth electron will go there as well. So for beryllium, you end up with something that looks like this, the first s orbital filled, and the second s orbital filled like that before electrons begin to fill into the p orbitals. Now for boron, sure enough, the first four electrons will occupy the two s orbitals, but now you have a fifth electron, and that fifth electron will go into one of the three p orbitals. Typically, it'll, be, it'll probably share the three p orbitals one third of the time. It'll spend one third of the time here, one third of the time there, one third of the time there, but uh, for illustration-wise, we'll just put in one of the orbitals. Let's put it in right there. But now the key comes in when we put the second one, uh, the sixth electron in for carbon. Again, the first two s orbitals are filled, so we put the electrons there. We know there's already one in the p orbital, but where does the next one go? Will the sixth one go in the same orbital as this one? The answer is no. Electrons rather not share an orbital if they can help it. So since there's two open ones, it'll take one of those two open ones. In addition to that, will the sixth electron be spin up or spin down? And it turns out if, they are sharing, if they're not sharing orbitals and they're, they're yet placed into separate orbitals, they would prefer to be in the same spin direction. So you'll find that the sixth electron will also be in spin up. It will not be in the opposite direction from this one. And now we go to nitrogen. So again, we have the two s orbitals filled. We already have the two electrons in the p orbitals. Now for the last electron, or the seventh electron in case of nitrogen, where will it go? Well, it sees this open space right there. It'll plop itself down right in that orbital because there's not already one there. And it's going to have the same spin direction as the other two spin up like that. All right, now to oxygen. So the first two s orbitals are filled and we already had one electron in each of the p orbitals. Now we have one more electron that needs to be placed there. That electron really doesn't care which orbital it goes into. It'll probably spend about one third of time in each of the sharing, but we can just say, hey, if it goes into one of the orbitals, it'll be an opposite spin from the electron that's already there. Okay, for fluorine, we have the s orbitals filled, like so. We already had four electrons in the p orbitals. Now we have to have a fifth one. Again, it'll, be in, it'll go in one of these two. It doesn't matter which one, so let's go ahead and place it right there. And then finally, to neon, you can see that the s orbitals are filled and also all three p orbitals will also be filled with electrons in opposite spin direction for each orbital. So you can see that progressively, as electrons are placed in the orbitals, they will seek the, the lowest energy orbitals first, and as those fill up, it'll go to the next level, and the next level, and the next level, and so on. It does appear that whenever there is already one in an orbital, that the second one will not take the same orbital, will go into a free one. 
The third one will go into free one as well. And also notice that they tend to be the same spin direction as they fill each individual orbital in the p orbitals before they start reversing spin direction to be able to share the space with one that's already there. And that's how the electrons fill up the, the orbits or the orbitals for the first 10 atoms on the periodic table.